occupancy. Uh, and um, he's uh, really, uh, he's inherited the company, of course, but the immense strides that I've seen it taking, you know, from the days of uh, Rupa, when I used to visit their office in Daryaganj to its very swish new office now, to the uh, new authors he's picked up, to the way he handles very seasoned politicians and their... Uh, uh, tantrums and shall we say their little foibles he does that so uh, seamlessly that it's um, very easy to forget that he's what 35 years old how old are you you're a baby Kapish uh, so quite a remarkable young man and um, uh, I'm so happy to uh, invite him to Tiffin Talks today we're going to begin by talking about yet another bestseller that he's picked up and as usual controversial uh, Pranam Mukha, the late president Pranam Mukherjee's uh, uh, final memoirs, but um, uh, Kapish will talk about a lot else. So hello and welcome Kapish. Uh, uh, Rupa Publications is you and you are Rupa. Uh, and it's an 85 year old company, right? Yeah, so first of all, thanks for that uh, introduction, Kaveri, which was laced with humor and embarrassment. Uh, <laughs> embarrassment so... maybe for you, but uh, yeah. you, know, you should be very proud of your achievements, Kapish. Well, I, well, I think uh, it's I'm 36 uh, and a few corrections. Uh, I am not Rupa. It is a combination of 150 colleagues of mine who define Rupa. Um, I am one of them and we all have a part to play and this wouldn't be here uh, if it weren't for the previous three generations and the fourth generation right. and if it wouldn't be for the many people who have worked with us in this journey so far and are a part of this. So really this is not just Kapish but it's really the Rupa team which is making it happen um, right. and, and, uh, and, and, and in that team there are also a lot of well-wishers like yourself who have been kind enough to um, we, you know, probably make people Sunday evening boring by inviting somebody <laughs> like me. Uh, no, but actually the Friday mornings exciting by carrying excerpts from your books uh, well, uh, in uh, India today. I remember we did a lot of work together and it was really quite uh, wonderful. Well, I've known you for the longest and uh, and you're right. Uh, infancy probably is, is the <laughs> right way to describe it. Uh, but uh, but I, I, I think... Um, I think it's it's the sim, it's the symbiotic relationship of media and uh, content, right? Any world yeah. of type of content that kind of works. Uh, so yeah, yeah. So Kapish, really, I have to ask you because uh, you know uh, you've seen books around you since uh, I guess you were born, and uh, I read somewhere that your father used to make you dust the bookshelves, uh, uh, you know, as sort of practice uh, to uh, sort of start working there. But uh, what really uh, makes you uh, an author or pick a book what is it that uh, you know drives that well I think uh, f first of all yes my father did start uh, making me get into the business fold by giving me a duster to get into the bookshop and the office I think it now in hindsight it was a great learning because it keeps you grounded and and the guy on the floor knows that you know uh, the guy on the top also has the same skill set and probably more uh, and I still think that's a good entry point Coming to a question of what makes it, uh, how do you pick a bestseller, especially in this uh, non-fiction biography or yeah, you know, which politics Which is really space. your strength, you know? So in the last 10 years, we have consciously focused on uh, moving from fiction to non-fiction because non-fiction is a very large play in this, uh, in this space today. The fiction audience is limited to a few authors, but the non-fiction audience is a fairly wide audience. Right. Um, so to, uh, to go back to your question, uh, it is really the personality and also the life of that personality, right? And the kind of interactions and the moments of those interactions. So these four things are very critical. So person, um, interactions, timing, um, and, and such. So that kind of defines uh, an interesting narrative because let's be honest, uh, people always want to know what they don't know yet. Hmm. I think that's a critical point uh, of reference for any uh, best-selling <laughs> book in the nonfiction space. Right. But it's not always easy to persuade some of these people to part with that information, you know. So how, what, what skill set does it require? People like Natwa Singh, people like Pranam Mukherjee, you know, these are seasoned politicians. They've seen so much and they don't always want to part with what they know. How do you persuade them? So that's a very good question. It, it actually um, is something that one works very, um, um, you know, works towards very carefully and keeping in mind the sensitivity of the author and the information they want to share. 
uh, we first have to understand that the relationship between an author and a publisher is built on the premise of absolute trust, right? Mm -hmm. um, and that trust develops over a period of time, obviously not on the first day, but um, it is that trust that enables a publisher uh, to persuade the author uh, at certain points in time to share some information which they uh, may think might be sensitive at the beginning, but they may yield into it simply because in the greater uh, context and the greater good uh, of the book and, and the narrative they're putting out. Um, we have to remember that these people have seen public life uh, for 50 years or 40 yeah. years or, or for a long time, right? So they've, they've seen the different types and different shades of life. Um, so therefore, they are very well aware of what can be construed as uh, probably something which is going to create a controversy, but also sometimes can be taken as false controversy. So one has to be very careful. Uh, mm -hmm. Second is that going back to the trust equation, it's, you know, they have to believe that there are things that they may choose to say mm -hmm. and then ask you to delete, but then they will remain with you only, right? right. Uh, because that degree of trust and confidence is very important. Yeah because that allows you deliberation because without that they have to make a decision which sometimes can be difficult right yeah so that's how one has to work towards that and third is i think you know when you uh, cherry pick different incidents one does come come across a situation where people uh, and the authors themselves want to share more uh, mm. in their book than what they have spoken in the past so mm. that is really the x factor which gives you the additional information which you wouldn't know earlier right and yet uh, you know when you know something uh, and the author shared it with you and still he or she keeps it back. That must be heartbreaking uh, for a publisher, right? Because you know that's something that's really going to trigger even greater sales. How do you come to terms with that? Do you still try to persuade the author, come on, you know, let's do this. It'll, you know, it's in the greater good, whatever. How do you do that? Well, lots of cup of cups of tea or coffee sometimes help, uh, um, and um, you know, and every author has their own liking. From a, from a Natwar Singh uh, who who used to love his wine to a Pranam Mukherjee who loves who used to love his samosas. So That's everybody true. has so everybody has their own 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 quirks. I so think, you have uh, to ply them with more wine or more samosas. <laughs> well, I I hope it was that easy, but I think it's really that uh, one tries to. Um, nudge them uh, to feel comfortable. I think that's most important. Um, and there is, and one has to be realistic that there is everything won't be published. Hmm. Uh, so the attempt is to get uh, as much as one can uh, with being mindful of the fact that some of this will be dropped at the final stage. Yeah. Uh, and that happens time and time again. Yes, it's something that sort of, you know, as a publisher, one feels, oh no, why, or, you know, if yeah. I wish this would have gone as well. But then, you know, it's a trade-off. You understand uh, that, you know, some things will never be spoken, so. Right. So with uh, the late president, how did you build that equation of trust? Because uh, he was a charming man. And of course, he was a storehouse of information. And he, he could just reel off uh, constitutional amendments and constitutional provisions, you know, at the drop of a hat. But how did you build that equation over, over the years? So I actually met him uh, for the first time in 2013 on 30th of December. I still remember the date. <laughs> yeah. And this was in, not in Delhi. It was in Hyderabad uh, because he had gone there to spend uh, the winters. Um, and I had received uh, the manuscript from uh, his office uh, and through a common friend um, before. I'd read it and I happened to walk into a very large room, Kaviri. Um, mm. um, and there was this... Uh, um, gentleman, you know, who, who was the president of India at that time, sitting in the corner, and I was um, much younger than I am now. Yeah. Uh, and uh, it was one of those few moments in life when I did feel a little, you know, um, conscious about uh, uh, about who I was meeting, and more importantly, about uh, the age gap. Normally, that doesn't come into my mind anymore. Um, having spent about forty five minutes with him, uh, we discussed various aspects of the manuscript. He gave in and he said, yes, let's let's do it. And that was it. I mean, it was as simple as that. I mean, hard to believe, but the president of India, uh, a seasoned uh, veteran of public life, uh, took 45 odd minutes uh, and a cup of coffee. And we you know, decided that we'll go ahead. And uh, that was it. Uh, I walked out of um, that uh, uh, that uh, building uh, with a contract in hand, uh, signed and uh, ready to execute. Uh, so I still remember that, and I and I remember because just the next day was New Year's Eve, and you know he couldn't have given me a better New Year gift. Right. Uh, 
Now coming to that's how it started. Coming to how you build confidence, I think what over the period of years, you know, we began to interact more and more on the manuscript. And one suggested to him various aspects that he may wish to consider writing. Sometimes, uh, as hard as it may be to believe, that he may he did uh, sometimes miss mentioning a few uh, incidents. Uh, and therefore, when you did mention that to him, you know, it obviously gave you a greater leverage in terms of trust. Um, also, uh, you know, there were times then that once you get to know the author's personality, you suggest to uh, the author that, you know, they may wish to remove this because this is something that they will find controversial okay. or too controversial to digest at the final draft stage. Yeah. Now, that also is, 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 a, is a good, uh, you know, um, back and forth um, exercise in which trust is developed, where the other party knows that you have nothing but the interest of the book at heart. Right. And uh, at this point in time, I just like to you know take thirty seconds to point out to you, Kaveri, that we have had the uh, good fortune and the privilege and uh, you know blessings of the Almighty to publish people across the domain, right? So from extreme left to extreme right, we published everybody, right? Yeah. Um, and I think that uh, is only possible if they believe that the publisher has no political agenda, yeah. has no you know ulterior motive. Our job is really to create a good book that people like to read. And that the author feels comfortable lending the name to, uh, and that I think is the real USP uh, in making sure that uh, that comfort is established, and therefore you know persuasion happens. Right, and yet uh, we find that uh, you know his family seems to have objected to this uh, final memoir. Why do you think that happened? Well, uh, I I do know that his uh, um, elder son Abhijit Mukherjee. Uh, I did not object, but wished to, uh, you know, he put out some comments on Twitter hmm. um, to which the brother and sister sort of, you know, had a, a bit of, a, you know, um, let's say engagement. Mm -hmm. uh, and, uh, but we... Very uh, diplomatically. <laughs> uh, and as far as we are concerned, you know, we, um, it, it so happened, and I'm sure your uh, listeners and viewers of this program would be very uh, interested to know that... Uh, Pranada actually signed uh, and you know agreed to every word that is published in the book. Right. And this book had didn't happen over a period of a year. It took almost two and a half years to finish mm -hmm. from start. And uh, Pranada is very, very particular about everything. And therefore, every chapter went through multiple iterations. And mm -hmm. what has been published is something that he agreed. Um, and which was, as I said, uh, over many cups of uh, tea and coffee at his uh, Ten Rajaji Marg uh, residence. Mm -hmm. um, and sadly or so that he happened to choose the cover of the book mm. uh, which is prophetic in a way right um, mm. on, on the night before he fell in this washroom and had to be mm. admitted to so in fact even the cover has been chosen by him so that's the degree of detailing uh, that happened in the book and you know that the way he's waving goodbye so it's, yeah it's, yeah yeah absolutely so it's it's you know it's one of those things that you feel uh, um, terrible about he wanted to see this book uh, I remember him mentioning to me uh, once that uh, let's do this soon. Uh, I may not be around forever. Uh, and then COVID struck and therefore, you know, things got a bit delayed. I just wish he's happy from wherever he is uh, seeing what the book is done. It's number one right now. Uh, yeah. And I am happy to report that uh, as of Sunday afternoon, we are out of copies. Wow. Well done. But uh, what is it about this book you think that has struck a chord with people? Because I think he's been quite frank and yet quite measured in his assessment of both uh, the Congress leadership as well as the BJP leadership. Would you say that, that he's been quite uh, even-handed? Well, I think uh, the temperament of Pranam Mukherjee uh, is such that he has been very, um, he's very trans, he was very transparent always. Mm -hmm. And um, he really didn't dis uh, decide his response to you depending on which side of the aisle you were from, right? Whether right. it's uh, right or left. Um, and, and um, so therefore I would say it's even handed, yes, but also there are so many aspects, right? Please remember he was an active politician before he became president. And yet right. he happened to discharge the duties of his office uh, while making sure that he handled two very different governments uh, with great uh, grace and uh, you know um, warmth that both the prime minister shared with him. Now that in itself is an art of in diplomacy, right? It's a lesson in diplomacy. Um, mm -hmm. But he also his interactions have been so far and wide that uh, he has a perspective, having spent so many years in public life, right, um, on, on every individual he may have come across, not just once, but many times over. Um, 
and he had a, like you rightly said kaveri you interacted with him he had a very you know keen uh, eye and he observed uh, things very uh, minutely yeah. Yeah. so so therefore these these um, interesting anecdotes that have come into the book and there are quite a few actually yeah um in fact uh, one that i like particularly it's not an anecdote but an observation when he talks about the absence of the leader of the house you know uh, the absence of the prime minister from the house and he talks about what an impact it actually makes on government and he compares it to the first term of manmohan singh and then he compares it to the second term of manmohan singh and um, uh, mr modi's first term so um, uh, you know things like that that can only come from an acute uh, uh, you know um, sort of understanding of politics but uh, could you also mention to our readers some of the things that you found very exciting and uh, interesting here's the cover by the way for those who've not seen it it's a lovely cover but as you said very prophetic you know uh, waving goodbye to all of us and um, quite sad yeah that it is I, you know yeah. I, I, so um i hope he is happy wherever he is uh, okay. i'm i'm so on on your first point with regards to you know the absence of uh, the leader in the yeah. parliament uh, pranam mukherjee was always a great believer in the uh, power of democracy and yeah. therefore the power of the parliament right um in fact if anything he disliked uh, the um, anything any parliament session which was adjourned for any reason right yeah. Uh, and that is something that kind of uh, he was very very um um i would may i say sensitive about and therefore we- wanted any leader um and definitely uh, the leader of the uh, house uh, whichever uh, side of the aisle they may right. whichever pa- side of the aisle on, from political perspective they may be whether pm manmohan singh or pm modi right. uh, they, he wished for the leader to engage as much as possible yeah. and he's made that comment for both of them uh yes. because he gen- he genuinely felt at multiple times that uh, the more the level of engagement uh the greater the degree of uh, democracy and uh, understanding amongst different aspects of uh, uh, governance across different um, parts of uh, the political spectrum mm-hmm. if we if you remember there have been multiple speeches he's given mm-hmm. in parliament on difficult issues yeah. but that has changed the vote of the house so right. that i think is why he believed in the power of uh, the parliament and hence that comment going to the second question which was yeah. what is interesting in the book so there are you know multitudes of things from uh, the afzal decision of afzal guru yeah. uh, the hanging um to the fact that he told barack obama that uh, i will not sit with you in your car uh, yeah. you know you have to go ahead you know there is a protocol and and please understand it's, uh, it's not easy uh, for anybody you know uh, as a president of the country to say that to a president of another nation considering right. that it's the world's only superpower right yeah. um then at the same time then there is the andhra pradesh incident where there was a governor and supreme court yeah. um there is demonetization uh then there is obviously unfortunately the decline of the congress uh and his views on their leadership uh his views on prime minister modi and the way ahead um uh, and i i can mention to you that i have been uh personally present in one or two such instances um uh when uh, i saw him uh going through these uh, motions hmm. um the uh, you know the afzal guru file is something i remember i was there in the study of rashtrapati really? bhavan Yeah. and um he was uh, you know it, there was a certain degree of uh, angst on his face uh, because nobody likes to take a decision which can sort of you know have a certain type of repercussion but he had a very very um, clinical way of you know uh, and i asked him i remember asking him this and i said you know dada how do you you know how do you go to sleep you know knowing that this has happened and this will happen make it by the decision you made and i remember his answer he said i don't make the decision the president of india does and my job is to just act as per the spirit of the constitution and discharge right. that role clinically and i thought that is right. a very perfect answer to describe how you handle such issues which would you know kill other people so yeah right. his relationship with sonia gandhi he's written a lot but there was a lot that perhaps he hasn't written as well do you uh, have any sense of what he actually felt or has he actually written what he actually felt well kaveri uh, i want to go to sleep peacefully so i will not open my mouth <laughs> uh, and um, and of course there are he's given uh, some he shared some perspectives mm. um, and and um, there are things that uh, you know of course would never come in the public domain but like i said yeah. you know some things are uh, confidential and they should remain so right 
because it was a difficult relationship. Uh, um, while it was respectful, there were also a lot of tensions. So I wonder uh, how much of it is in the book and how much of it is not. But of course, Kapish won't tell. <laughs> no, well, I, well, I won't tell, but Pranabda has, and he has mentioned in the book that there was uh, a while there was a great camar camaraderie between yeah. uh, Sonia Gandhi and uh, him. Uh, there were also places where they disagreed with each other. Um, and she did give him the elbow room to, uh, you know, explain um, the, the rationale of his decision. Uh, and he says so in um, the same, uh, you know, same light for Manmohan Singh, uh, Mr. Manmohan Singh, that, you know, um, he did give that opportunity. Mm. Uh, so, uh, but there is, of course, there is a lot that he's described. And for any uh, um, suave uh, watcher of political news and, you know, follower of current affairs, uh, one can infer uh, a lot in between the lines, especially the nature and of words that he is used in in each context. Yeah, I think so. That that's quite something. Uh, Kapish, let's also look at some of the uh, other work that you've published. You know, you've had a great relationship with Chetan Bhagat. Uh, you know, uh, and um, if I'm correct, you're the one who persuaded your father to increase the print run from five thousand to ten thousand for the first book that he wrote for Rupa. 2004, right? Uh, yeah. That and that sort of set uh, set uh, off a whole revolution in uh, the idea of this uh, Indian English uh, writing. Uh, you know, it's uh, that whole idea of the non-literary and literary, which of course I don't believe in, but uh, it's a, it's a false uh, uh, distinction. But um, uh, talk about your relationship with Chetan and how you saw that uh, a whole um, uh, industry virtually being born in front of you. Um, see, first is that um, every publisher has, a, has to have a relationship of comfort and trust with an author they publish. Mm -hmm. And that, that uh, relationship only develops over a period of uh, you know, years and as you go from book one to book two. Mm -hmm. And I think that's the same case with uh, uh, Chetan. We had a, we've uh, had known each other for many years now and had have had a wonderful uh, relationship. Um, on the on the aspect of uh, how the choice was made about a certain book at a certain time, um, whether it's Chetan's first book of doubling the print run or otherwise, uh, even the others that followed, I have always maintained a very simple, uh, you know, um, we, boilerplate uh, uh, way to suggest and identify books that we should publish. Uh, is the book interesting? Would the book be interesting to a prospective reader? Hmm. Is there a market that there will be for this reader, for this book? And are we able to, would we be able to reach it, reach out to the target audience in an effective way? Hmm. Right? Um, and after, beyond that, I have never bothered about different de definitions and classifications of books, like you li rightly mentioned. Um, I have said in the past that, you know, I don't believe in the uh, literary, non-literary, yeah, this, that, et cetera. And, and, we are, and as, as a publisher, I am, I am supposed to serve the reader. Yeah. My job is not to decide what the reader should read. My job is to make sure that I provide what the reader may want to read. And therefore, it is critical to understand and have a, a, a sense of the pulse of the reader and therefore publish accordingly. Now, that would be better explained. If, if I give it to you in numbers, in 2000, from 2004 till 2011 or so, 12, we've done a lot of fiction because fiction was something a lot of people were sort of enjoying and reading, etc. And then that was about 80% of our list. Uh, from 2012 onwards till now, uh, you know, we've slowly sort of switched from fiction to nonfiction. And now um, I'm happy to report that about 80% of our list is nonfiction. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm not married to fiction uh, or mm -hmm. I'm not married to, you know, a definition. I'm just very clearly um, looking for a book that would appeal to a certain segment of readers. And that segment and that readership would change from time to time. My job is to make sure that we read the market before anybody else does. Right. Why do you think we've made that uh, shift from fiction to nonfiction over the years? What changed? So we have to go back to 2004 for that because okay. 2004 was uh, about the time which was the birth of a younger India, which was in the form of BPOs and all this right. new culture that was coming about. Right. So therefore, the uh, disposable income suddenly was very high in the hands of children who or people who couldn't afford that kind of luxury or expense at a you know a five year five year ago period. 
so there were there was this aspirational audience who wanted to read english but was still getting into that space but was uh, kind of uh, unsure about reading heavy english right so that's what led to the birth of what we call commercial fiction right, right. and that went on uh, also then people had begun to switch to books as a form of light entertainment right um, uh, because you know it, these things go through, uh, through through various cycles of uh, evolution uh and i think books in that period of time were being looked out largely for a lot of uh, uh, light hearted comfortable uh, entertainment on a 2 hour flight 3 hour flight that's how the, even the length of the books were defined um, uh, at that point in time slowly what happens is that uh, over a period of time people uh, tend to enjoy something only that much and then move on mm. so that audience you know moves on and becomes slightly more evolved in the reading process and then ends up going to or you know graduating to non fiction Hmm. um and also that ties in with the uh, you know uh, the great inroads that mobile telephony and mobile entertainment for for had that it, uh, has happened over the last few years hmm. because a lot of people now use um for fictional entertainment the a digital platform of which is visual medium versus uh, the yeah, yeah that is one way of looking at it and therefore i think uh, right. yeah this would be the reason right uh, so that's why they're moving towards non fiction whether it's self help or whether it's politics uh, in the non fiction business is what dominates is it self help is it politics is there any one particular kind of non fiction that dominates well non fiction across the spectrum uh, you know works nicely but within the non fiction space uh, business and management biographies and autobiographies uh, have always held a uh, you know important space mm-hmm. followed by self help mm-hmm. and now with uh, this pandemic and slightly just before that you know with the, the with the fascination towards nutrition mm-hmm. and health the the space of health and nutrition has also sort of you know uh, been taking up a large share of publishing programs mm-hmm. so i would say biography autobiography business and management self help health then obviously there will be the static sellers of philosophy religion arts culture right. which you right. know go on for uh, which also form a great backlist for any publisher right you know when we talk about entertainment uh, uh, you know uh, has that uh, section that has migrated to streaming services uh, for instance uh, has that completely departed and is not reading anymore what's happening with them or are they reading uh, non fiction and watching fiction uh, uh, on streaming well it's difficult to do that that degree of generalization because we have to look at it a little more closely if you look at an audience of a, uh, of a kid who was 18 years old in 2004 mm. and um sort of sort of came into um, you know uh, say a delhi ncr got his first job you know etc etc that point in time was looking out to read something which is in english but in english they could relate to and understand Right. and was also entertaining and not heavy duty right mm-hmm. that uh, that slowly then increases in that that kid or that journey of that kid moves from fiction slowly to uh, self help mm-hmm. right because then after you get comfortable with the language you want to do self improvement etc etc and right. after self improvement comes uh, you know slightly more serious reading because you kind of you know uh, evolved in in that space that's one particular journey uh, but mm-hmm. there are multiple journeys right different people different age groups different yeah. time um the simple uh, uh, assessment that could be probably um, developed on this premise of why people have moved to streaming for fiction is probably because it's uh, very uh, it's packaged entertainment in 10 minute 20 minute slots right uh, mm-hmm. if you notice the the series on netflix or amazon prime or all these streaming apps are each each uh, season is packed with episodes are not more than 20 25 minutes right so that's mm-hmm. probably the attention span that they have noticed number one mm-hmm. number two is that they are it's light hearted entertainment at probably an annual cost mm-hmm. so there is no repeat transaction right. three right. three that you have to understand the people who are reading commercial fiction um, uh, for pure entertainment uh, still do they haven't gone away but they have just now begun be to be very focused on say across seven or eight authors in this country the breadth of commercial right. fiction is kind of um, you know narrowed right is that good for publishers uh, uh, are you uh, faced with a fewer sort of uh, a less less of an avalanche of uh, manuscripts what's happening there or is everybody still convinced that they're writers 
Well, uh, the number of manuscripts still, uh, you know, are about eight to ten a day. So, so that oh. hasn't that hasn't gone down. People unsolicited. do unsolicited. Yes, hmm. uh, people tend to uh, want to pen their thoughts, whether it's uh, poems, uh, stories, uh, or autobiographies, biographies, anything, self help, etc. And I, and I think everybody has a right to right. Uh, why not? Yeah. Um, uh, and 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 to be honest, at Rupa, we very carefully still look at the slush pile, uh, which is what we call the unsolicited manuscript uh, thing, uh, every week, uh, to make sure that we respond to everything that comes in, uh, and we try and respond to it within two to four weeks. Um, the attempt is basically to make sure that the end person who's tried to make an effort to write something down and send it to us uh, also appreciates that we value his or her time in you know submitting right. a manuscript now going back to your question about uh, is everybody writing well yes practically everybody across the spectrum <laughs> right but then that gives the breadth to publishing and the right. first part of your question which was is fiction is the reduction in the uh, number of successful authors in the fiction space a problem not really because if you if you're a publisher who's trying to read the trend of the market then you move from one category of publishing to the other and as I said, um, begin to identify readers who are wanting a different type of content and service that. Right. So what all have you discovered in the slush pile? You discovered Chetan in the slush pile? No. Or did you? Yeah. Well, uh, yes and no. It did come in through a, through a somebody and it was also there in the in the submission thing. And then we had a look at it. There was uh, there was Chetan, there was Ravi Subramanian, um, there was uh, there was some a girl called Tisha Khosla. There were quite a few people whom we published in the fiction space at that point in time. In the non-fiction, obviously, it's not such by because you ideate, you think, and then you sort of you know yeah, approach. That's true. And yeah, and you mentioned Natwar Singh and Pranam Mukherjee. We've had the privilege of publishing from Natwar Singh, uh, Vinod Rai, uh, yeah. Pranam Mukherjee, of course, uh, Chandra Shekhar. The former my book on PM, former PM Chandrasekhar, um, Meghna Desai, N.K. Singh, uh, uh, Subramaniam Swami, P. Chidambaram, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And uh, the next one that's lined up uh, in about uh, two to three weeks' time is uh, the autobiography of uh, former Vice President Ansari. Yeah, I'm really looking forward to that. But there are also some that uh, you've uh, commissioned and have not happened. I think Mani Shankar Iyer uh, is something that uh, is someone that you've been trying to persuade for the longest time, and it hasn't quite happened. What what's happening there? Because so I would love to. I would love to read that. So Prana Mukherjee is not the only one who has a sharp memory. I think Kaveri Bangla also <laughs> does. Uh, so yes, I have been chasing Mani Shankar Iyer for some time. Uh, and while he is, uh, uh, you know, a great um, orator, uh, yeah. but I think, you know, there is, uh, he's not been able to get around to writing uh, the book that we've been discussing. I'm sure at some point in time he will. Um, but uh, yeah, but, uh, but I think uh, there are many such people whom we have commissioned um, and, Unfortunately, they don't, you know, you don't get to know about them or it doesn't see the light of the day simply because, you know, uh, the book doesn't happen. Uh, hence, uh, uh, one has to be on the ball all the time and continue to right. commission with the possibility that some may fall through the cracks. Some may fall through. What about uh, entertainment? How, uh, how um, popular is uh, books on entertainment? So we are going to be publishing two major autobiographies in the coming, in, in this year. Uh, one is the autobiography of uh, Manish Malhotra. Oh, okay. And one is the autobiography of Rakesh Om Prakash Mehra. Okay. Uh, uh, and, you know, these two people have a certain type of journey which is different from others, right? And that kind of makes it more interesting because it's Manish didn't start out to be a fashion designer. Right. Uh, and therefore, you know, and look where he's, and, you know, where he is today. Uh, and, you know, Rakesh Om Prakash Mehra had a different type of vision for filmmaking to, mm -hmm. and to what he's made today. So, one always looks out for you know people who have that slant on the entertainment space if it's an autobiography or if it's a biography of a of a well-established person then it does have a great uh, pull we just published uh, um Irfan, we happened to publish irfan khan's uh, a book on irfan khan by that's, Asim done, Chabra. that's done very well especially after his unfortunate passing away yes it has and yes it, it you're right it did well um, and it still is doing well uh, because you know he yeah. he has been a celebrated actor and uh, right. and had a tragic uh, you know uh, last few years um, 
you know so but but people enjoy do enjoy reading his about his journey and and so right. so definitely we also did a book by on shashi kapoor we did yeah. a book on priyanka chopra so it depends you have to choose those people who have the kind of journey which would make it appealing for a reader please right. remember there is a transaction before the enjoyment and that transaction is for the reader to purchase a book and for yeah. that there has to be enough of a hook for them to be able to sort of you know right. uh, press the press the buy button or lose the purse strings right so we also we we talked about uh, people like chetan but then there are also some of these timeless authors you have like gulzar or ruskin bond i mean ruskin bond what has 70 books with you that's amazing what explains the appeal of somebody like ruskin bond so uh, ruskin bond has about 130 40 books with us now um and <laughs> yeah yeah and we've had the good fortune of publishing him uh, for a fairly long time i think uh, right. R- ruskin has the ability to reinvent the art of storytelling every few years and if you notice his writing while the writing style may have remained same but he is able to introduce plots subplots twists and turns um, in for every generation so if there were uh, no vampires 15 years ago there are vampires in the story today you know so he is catering to to the the child of today Mm-hmm. but the beauty of bond is that he has a very large target audience you know like i i always say it's, he's 8 to 80 you know anybody right. can read yeah. um and i think that is because of the simplicity of his writing yeah. right? um and therefore you're right he's timeless um, we also published prasoon joshi we published gulzar in the past uh, and uh, we the longest running sports autobiography in the world is uh, sunny days by sunil oh, gavaskar wow. which still continues to be in print yes and it's one of my favorite books i remember reading it um, when it first came out it was uh, it was extraordinary then because no sportsman had ever been so upfront and frank about uh, you know his uh, shortcomings and his uh, his um, uh, his achievements as well that was really something wasn't it that was your father who persuaded him how did how did that happen do you know the story behind that well i do know the fact that it it was a conversation my between my father and uh, mr gavaskar and uh, that led to the creation of uh, sunny days uh, and uh, they they are still in touch they have a great uh, you know fondness for each other mm. um, and i remember one particular incident that uh, because uh, Mr Gavaskar was very particular about the proofs so mm-hmm. i remember my, uh, my father telling me that he took the proofs to sunil's house um got it uh, you know got him to see it and bombay being bombay used to it used to rain a lot in the months of july and august mm-hmm. and uh, with the manuscript in one hand and shoes in the other he came walking back to the hotel in you know in water which was up to his knees uh, so so uh, you know there is there is the less glamorous side of publishing as well sometimes uh, <laughs> and but but then that, that's it's worth the effort isn't it we still right. talk about the book after so many years yeah it's uh, again it's one of those ageless books what about gulzar gulzar is also not a very easy person to work with i mean he's of course an enormously talented poet but he's also a little difficult to handle so how did you uh, manage him so to speak well you know as i said um, the first thing i've always learned is that i don't i don't try to manage because i think that's where mm-hmm. we lose the plot if because anybody and everybody sees the artificiality of engagement right, right? it's best to be transparent um, mm-hmm. and honest and but also be uh, you know um, slightly diplomatic right mm-hmm. uh, gulzar sahab is somebody i have known since i was a kid uh, mm-hmm. so maybe i have had the uh, i have taken some privileges uh, that others wouldn't have had the luxury of Mm-hmm. um um so you know he's made breakfast for me when i was a kid so i can sort of still you know really? call him up yeah what did so, he make uh, what cheese toast i think so sweet <laughs> so so i can't imagine gulzar in the kitchen <laughs> you know no, he's, he's he's a very sweet uh, person and it's just you know you have, see they have to any author has to trust your instinct and your judgment from a creative perspective and i think right. the, the unfortunately we try very hard to be somebody we aren't and sometimes that doesn't work uh, and right. these people who have been uh, interacting with thousands of individuals across their life yeah. can see that see through that very quickly right and it isn't always about money is it kapish it isn't always about the biggest advance so is it now well uh, you know different uh, forms of publishing have a different way of approaching them so there will be books which will go through auctions and therefore will be about the biggest advance and for some it won't be because it will also be about positioning creation see please understand that 
um, the biggest um, um, thing in publishing from as far as i'm concerned for the from this non fiction space is really the creation of a possible chapterization mm. because that i think is the backbone of any book right and that is critical towards you know the next step in terms of writing etc cetera, etc cetera. um and i think today a lot of authors who write in the non fiction space whether it's business management self help or it's autobiography or biography need that degree of hand holding to be able to suggest guide and create that perfect structure which would then uh, you know make it easier for them to then develop on top of right um, mm-hmm. and i think th- that's where uh, the authors make the judicious choice of uh, hopefully choosing us and uh, allowing us to work with them right how easy or difficult is it to get and keep good editors well i think uh, each colleague is an asset right and um, and i think um, i don't think it's difficult uh, I, it's about you know making sure that a creative individual is given their creative freedom um, and mm. yet understands the four corners of an organization and how it you know, f- functions so i think as long as that is uh, you know taken care of uh, that shouldn't be a problem and somebody like you who's been in the space and worked with stalwarts like uh, mr puri would know better how creative freedom is managed <laughs> yes what about your uh, association with alf how is uh, how has that uh, happened and that's again a great uh, um, um, a great initiative and a great innovation isn't it yeah well uh, david is a is a uh, fantastic uh, you know uh, person and a great uh, colleague and a uh, wonderful partner um i so in, when i took over publishing uh, i was about still in college actually um and i tried to sort of manage publishing and you know economics at the same time um and i said i said to myself that we need to become india's largest um commercial fiction publisher um in 7 to 10 years and by the grace of the almighty that happened uh, by the time uh, we reached about 2010 you know we were publishing most of the uh, fiction authors and uh, at that point in time i realized that we were slowly people were beginning to sort of you know reach a space where they wanted more, more outside of the space and therefore we were looking to start uh, something which was in the uh, literary fiction space literary non fiction space because that was a space that we hadn't occupied so far um and this space is dominated by um, a good editor Uh, a good publisher and uh, there was nobody better than david and when he returned to india we had a chat um and i said uh, you know let's go ahead um and really it was uh, uh, while a lot of people have speculated that there were a lot of negotiate negotiations mm-hmm. etc it wasn't really that bad you know we just uh, you know two people who have the same vision um, and uh, have the same perspective and outlook i think you know things uh, take their own course and now uh, you know it's been 10 years so i'll right. complete 10 years uh, this year and you're still a family held firm entirely family held firm although you've had a lot of offers of investment you've not taken them up yeah i'm the fourth generation i have been as you know i've been <laughs> mismanaging it for 15 years now uh, and um, we've had multiple offers but uh, i think the ethos of the organization is that we genuinely want to you know take care of people who work with for us and you know we treat every member as an extension of the rupa family um and i don't see a reason for an outsider's entry uh, uh till uh, you know till there is absolutely a need and i and uh, by god's grace we are far away from that so we are very we are fairly healthy and strong and uh, hopefully young too Uh, so rupa was the name of uh, 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 a character in a bengali play uh, uh, that your great grandfather picked up is that the story yeah so my great grandfather went to a uh, bengali play like you rightly mentioned and there were two characters uh, rupa and sona uh, uh-huh. in in the play uh, he felt uh, sona is too ostentatious to and for a name and therefore he chose rupa rupa in bengali means silver so he said you yeah. know this is slightly more you know uh, sounds humbler than say sona so <laughs> so, so that's how our first logo is actually made by satyajit ray uh, the original rupa logo that you might remember it was actually uh, made by satyajit ray because i don't know if your uh, viewers know this that our office in calcutta is just above the coffee house the famous coffee house okay. in college street and satyajit ray one day walked into our office after his cup of coffee and asked for the, you know what this was etc and when my grandfather great grandfather explained to him he said you have a logo and you know we obviously the answer is no 
and he just scribbled something made it and then gave it to my grandfather which then was the logo for for many wow. many years wow yeah. so why why haven't you kept it well we had it for the longest time but as technology progresses right. you need to have a logo which kind of um, shows up correctly on different platforms and sometimes uh -huh. if uh, you know that needs some changes what what a great story uh, so are your roots uh, still in calcutta or are you now very much a delhi firm well my father moved the organization to delhi in 1970 and as you know i have been uh, born brought up here so uh, and our our corporate office our sales office everything is here of course we have uh, branches across the country and now across the globe uh, but uh, we we are very much a delhi organization yes delhi based so where do you see uh, where do you see the reader going now uh, kapish uh, the indian reader the the young indian reader where do you see him or her moving towards i think the indian reader um, is defined in two parts not young or old but i think somebody who is you know just entering the reading space and somebody who is you know a mature reader you know right. um, uh and and i think uh, for a mature reader the mm. space is only expanding because there are various you know uh, categories in which publishers are pub beginning to publish which they haven't in the past like i mentioned short while ago health was something that people tend to ignore 5 right. or 7 years ago Absolutely. um and there were no parenting books big parenting yeah. books in india which have now begun to be you know be a, be something yeah. that publishers do um and for the for the uh, new reader uh, you know it is something that you know they are they have a wide variety to experiment from from a say a self help uh, to a business and management to that kind of you know um, um, th those kind of genres which they can then uh, you know explore and sort of begin their reading cycle what definitely has happened in this pandemic uh, is that people have begun to read more um they have uh, they have gone back to the uh, to remembering the enjoyment of uh, you know turning a page a piece in you know, a page and then sort of flipping through a book etc um uh, because there is only that much of screen time that one can handle yeah. um and while we are available on all digital platforms and audible audio platforms uh one has realized that the strength of uh, the paperback or the hardback uh, is very much um, uh, here to stay what about uh, um, you know adaptations for the screen uh, because uh, the screen is now hungry absolutely starving for content you know there's so much so many platforms out there so are you doing a lot of tie ups are you looking at uh, you know uh, are there is there a lot of sourcing happening there yeah uh, you know it's it's um, funny that you asked that because i was mentioning to a very um, a very major bollywood uh, producer uh some time back i said uh, you know i i observed i said the reason now you know the digital platforms are beginning to become hugely successful is because they're following the mcdonald's model mm -hmm. so when mcdonald's came into india they did not customize the food yeah. for indian palate and mm -hmm. once it, they did there was an aloo tikki burger and all that and that's what has happened with the netflix and amazon prime of the world who have now you know adapted to local content and local preferences uh which therefore has led to a situation where there is a great degree of uh, desire to pick up content for adaptation and uh, as we speak there are 11 of our books that are being adapted into different things of it course i can't share yeah of course i can't share names right now one the, at least one kapish come on give one little bit of information that people don't know <laughs> well i would i would love to share kaveri just that all these contracts are you know covered by a, a, a confidentiality clause and therefore a non disclosure agreement so oh, i'm oh. in a, not in a position to but there are 11 of them so therefore there is you are right there is a great hunger um uh, and people want to actually see a you know a visual adaptation of uh, of something which is a classic um whether it's an indian classic or whether it's a you know of uh, you know somebody who's been in the political space or 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 even some a sports person so yeah, yeah. so there is a lot uh, of potential in that space and we are working very aggressively uh, towards that yeah but you've not had any as yet we have we have had a few we so for example uh, um we we have uh, this uh, three idiots was made from 5.7 Uh, of course uh, one night of the call Very center was made famously and controversially again yeah one night of the call center half girlfriend all of these were chetan bhagat's books which yeah. made into movies um and uh, there are some that are actually being made into web series right now as we speak um uh, because crime is also an area where people are showing a lot of interest um yeah. so there is something that we have kind of uh, you know in advanced stages of production right oh but you won't tell me very bad
you will know soon <laughs> but uh, i see you know say things like the white tiger or sacred games or even a suitable boy i mean these are all adaptations that are happening around the globe and clearly people want good writing and it translates into great uh, you know cinema or uh, great television as well so going forward you will see a lot of that happening you think yeah so like suitable boy is our book right it is yeah. published in all exactly. so it is an adapt adaptation but uh, yes there will be more and more in this space uh, and you know this is space this space is also like publishing for me right hmm. um, you you start with crime so there was sacred games but today yeah. if you notice the uh, the bigger things that are working are in the biography space the yeah. the scam the harshad mehta you know series oh, yes. one of It's the biggest wonderful. trending series yeah so so if you notice that's how you know content consumption is, uh, you know follows a certain trajectory it starts with something but it ends up somewhere else yeah. whether it's print to whether it's digital or whether it's uh, ott so you think biopics are really the way uh, the world is moving to isn't it in a way uh, biopics are interesting because uh, you can either have a 40 minute series or you can have 20 minute 10 episodes right. but it's it really is dependent on the character right and if it's if it's done well uh, which i think uh, the harshad mehta series was done very yeah. well um, uh, um or say a milk something on milka singh that yeah. would certainly be of great interest right mm-hmm. um, um so but that doesn't mean that only biopics right so yeah. uh, crime is something that is always of interest and always more interesting to watch than um, you know because it can be more graphic that way right? yeah. uh so therefore that series on delhi crime i think is doing well yeah. uh, is that is that the way to go well as i said variety is very important so like the mcdonalds menu right great kapish it's been such a pleasure talking to you uh, i know that there are friends of yours and uh, i think people who are interested in uh, uh, our conversation but they don't seem to have a question so uh, i'm happy to report again that please do this is to our re- uh, viewers please do read this book but not just this a lot of what kapish uh, publishes is quite fascinating uh, uh, and thank you very much for being with us on tiffin talks kapish and all the very best and keep uh, keep finding that right mix of uh, uh, you know the the person and the story uh, for us to keep reading thank you very much thank you kaveri and i hope look forward to publishing you one day <laughs> i hope so thank you very much <laughs> thank you thanks so much thanks. bye